Welcome back to the show. If you're a Penn State student, you've most likely seen the singing Valentines around campus serenading one of your classmates. I found out a little bit more about this talented group of singers. You've seen them walking around campus on the 14th of February, or maybe even appearing in your classroom for a much anticipated interruption. A standard aspect of Valentine's Day at Penn State is the appearance of the infamous group of singing Valentines. In case you were wondering, this isn't just an impromptu group of students in suits, but members of the Dreamers a cappella group and music fraternity by Mu Alpha. The Dreamers were started about 21 years ago by Kevin McMahon. Uh, they sang their first doo-wop set down at Baby's downtown on uh, Gardner Street and from then on they went around singing uh, birthday gigs and Valentine gigs around campus uh, and developed into what is now the dreamers of FIMU Alpha. We've become the fraternity's main fundraiser so singing Valentine's goes to the fraternity any kind of gig we do any other time go the money goes to the fraternity so if you're in the fraternity or you're pledging or you're um, even an alumni you can just be in the group it's not an audition we're just here to have fun and help out the help out the fraternity. Dreamers director Jamie Gunther says what started as a simple fundraiser has evolved into an extremely rewarding experience. The main thing that we're known for around campus is singing Valentine's, which we do every February for about four or five days. Um, we go around campus busting into classrooms and dorm rooms and common lounges, and we sing doo-wop and 50s tunes and present someone with a rose, which is a lot of fun. We go from about eight in the morning to one, at, one in the morning the next day. So we were in 100 Thomas last year, and we got there, we were running early, so we got there before the class and we talked to the professor. And he had us uh, get collegians and sit in the front row of Hunter Thomas and called the girl down uh, to give her a paper back. And when she came down, he turned on the floodlight and we all got up and created and made our arc and sang our singing Valentine. And she was just about crying in front of, what is it, 400 people in Hunter Thomas. Um, it's a lot of fun for us. Uh, we had one gig two years ago where we went to somebody's apartment and they were sitting eating dinner with rose petals scattered everywhere and we sang Unchained Melody and they started dancing. So it's, it's pretty rewarding for us. Dreamers marketing director Matt Seiler says the popularity of singing Valentine's continues to grow to the point where last year the group had to turn people away. Occasionally you'll still find somebody who hasn't heard of it, which, which surprises me nowadays. Most of the time I can say, hey, yeah, you know that, those guys that do sing in Valentine's? Yeah, that's, that's us, that's the Dreamers. And they go, oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, I saw them here, or I got one, or oh, my God, I, I wanted to get one. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's grown pretty well. And last year we, uh, we really pushed hard to grow, make it grow and connect our name to it so people knew who we were. Siler recommends that men who are looking for an original Valentine's gift should consider the Dreamers, and he promises a unique and memorable experience for their significant other. The, the funny part is half of our business is usually girlfriends that buy them for boyfriends to embarrass them. Because it's, it's funny, guys don't realize that women actually like that. Sometimes guys walk past us in the hub and go, <laughs> nah, I'm gonna, just going to take her out to dinner, buy chocolates, whatever. But a lot of times... You know, especially those things, those ones in the evening, you know, we'll come to your apartment if you're making dinner for her or something like that. And it's really romantic and girls really like that. Especially if you can't sing yourself, <laughs> then, then we'll do it for you. Despite what can be a long and stressful weekend of performances, Siler says the experience he's had with the Dreamers is well worth the effort. You get a little nostalgic and you think about the things you've done and maybe the impact you've had or the things that you'll remember later. And this is definitely one of them. Uh, especially those four days walking around with a suit, you almost assumed that you're in it. I, there was times I was walking to catch up to them because I was coming from class, and someone was like, oh my God, are you with the singing Valentine's? I was like, yeah, yeah, it is. Hopefully you get one coming up. To have the Dreamers sing for you, just email them at dreamers at psu.edu. Now, talented chef Melanie Perjudi will show you how to make the perfect Valentine's Day breakfast. Good morning. I tiptoed down the stairs a little early this morning. My husband's taking me out for dinner tonight, so I, in turn, am going to surprise him with a really special breakfast for Valentine's Day. I'm going to show you how to make my creamy, crustless crab meat quiche with crispy oven-roasted bacon and brioche toast with a little dollop of peach preserves. This is really going to make our Valentine's Day special all day long. Let's get started. Now I did some of my prep work last night. I grated my Gruyere cheese and I chopped my onions just because I'm not a morning person and I really don't like to get up that early. 
I'm going to start by just spraying a standard 9 inch quiche dish with a little bit of no stick cooking spray. In a nice big bowl, I'm going to add three tablespoons of Wonder Flour. If you don't know what Wonder Flour is, it's a granulated flour that doesn't clump up when it gets stirred into things. I'm going to toss eight ounces of Gruyere cheese. And please, folks, buy the Gruyere. This is Valentine's Day. It's got a great nutty texture and it melts silky smooth. We're going to use, I'm using a sweet onion today. You can use a shallot if you like. Four ounces of that. Sorry about the clanking. One pound of the best lump meat, crab meat, you can afford. This is going to serve eight people, or my husband and I for breakfast two, two or three days in a row. All I'm going to do is toss these, these ingredients together. We want to get everything coated in the flour. This is as easy as this is. You see the jumbo lump meat? Oh, this is just beautiful. Once it's barely tossed around, that's finished. We're going to spoon it into our dish. And you don't want to dump it or press it. You really do want to keep it light and airy. No pressing, no dumping. You want to leave a lot of air spaces and nooks and crannies for our wonderful little sauce mixture to drizzle down through. And I'm almost done with this. Spread it out as evenly, as evenly in the bottom of the dish as you can. Does this look wonderful? This crab meat just smells beautiful. And of course, if you live anywhere near the shore or the summertime, like my cousin in New Jersey does, use fresh crab meat by all means to make this. The less you do here, the better. Don't be particular. Just get it in, mound it a little bit towards the center of the dish. Okay, that part's done. Easy enough so far. Okay, we're gonna make our sauce. I'm gonna start by breaking three eggs in the bottom of the dish. I'm using a measuring container here because I'm gonna have to drizzle this really slowly. And if you start to whisk this in a bowl, you're going to find out that it's not going to pour the way you want it to. Then I'm going to add one cup of cream, the real stuff, cream, cream, cream. Anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon of hot sauce. You can use your favorite hot sauce. Half a teaspoon of white pepper and ground nutmeg. Half a cup of mayonnaise. And mayonnaise, folks, is a really unique ingredient. Most people, you'd wonder why that would go into crab meat quiche, but mayonnaise as it adds a really creamy, tangy flavor to a lot of things, and it's gonna make for a really, really creamy sauce, creamy texture in your quiche. And lastly, fresh lemon juice, juice of one half of a lemon. Make sure, you know, you wanna keep the seeds out of it. How easy was that? And now, I'm just going to whisk this together until it's nice and smooth. I'm left-handed, so I've got to turn my container in the opposite direction. About 30 seconds here. And now, all we're going to do is drizzle this over the top of the quiche. And it's crustless, which I think is wonderful because I don't want to deal with a pie crust first thing in the morning either. I didn't invent it, but I'm pretty sure that somebody did for the same reason as me. They don't want to deal with making a pie crust first thing in the morning. Now drizzle this slowly, and watch, I'm going to go back and forth here, because I really want to get all this in, but if I put it in all in at once, it's going to spill out over the sides. You want to give it enough time to flow through all the nooks and crannies. And we're almost done. This is just about ready for the oven. When we come back, Melanie will finish up her delicious crab peach.